Hello, it's Chris from My Stamp Lady and it is gift giving season. So you will want to see a way to make those gift cards you give very special. So coffee themed gifts are really popular. I didn't have a coffee gift card with me, so we got a different one or I happen to have at my house, but this would be so cute to wrap up a coffee gift card. And it makes those Christmas gifts seem really special when it's a gift card. So this is this envelope is decorated for Christmas, but you could change out the embellishments, the stamp sets, and decorate for any season. So we're going to use the coffee cup framelits. I'm gonna show you how to cut the embellishments with that. I've decorated it with a few images from the Coffee Cafe stamp set. These two items are in our Stampin' Up! annual catalog. And from the holiday catalog, I'm using a couple of products. I'm actually not using the punch, but I wanted to show you that it comes with this. It's called the traditional um, Christmas punch board. So I'm using some of those. And I have a snowflake from Colorful Seasons and corrugated embossing folder and then the ovals. The ovals are one of my standards there. I keep the ovals and the circles and I use these layering ones all the time. So that's what I'm gonna use. But the star of the show is the entire envelope, which I am using the envelope punch board to create that. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around to see that. Okay, so I have all of my supplies cut. And you have them all, I have them all listed in on my blog post at mystamplady.com and it's the gift card envelope post. And you can also find the supplies and the sizes down below in the description. But you can find lots more information there. So I have all these pieces pre-cut for you and we're gonna get started. So the, to do the envelope, is done with the gift card, I'm sorry, the um, envelope punch board. I have picked out the size and it's, oh, I wanted a four and a quarter, I gotta find it, a four and a quarter by five and a half and it tells me that I need an eight by eight piece of paper. So from the dashing all along, or dashing all together, sorry, I can't remember, I'll put it up on the screen. Dashing along paper, I think that's what it is. I have cut an eight inch by eight inch piece of cardstock and so when I go back and I find this is the finished size, so five and a quarter, uh, four and a quarter by five and a half, paper size is eight by eight. My score line start, this is the key. My score line start guide is three and one half inches. So you will need the little scoring tool. You will need to find three and one half inches. And this is where some people get confused. This is only for the start. So I score, I'm just gonna score there and punch. And now I rotate and I don't go back to that three and a half inches. What I'm doing is I'm using my previous score line as the guide and I'm lining it up with this little, um, little pointer here and score that and then line it up again. So that first measurement is only for the first score and punch. After that, you only use your previous score lines, and that's how you make the gift or the envelope punch board work. I've just, there's a little corner rounder in there, so I pushed it back in to use that little corner rounder. Get rid of my little scraps here. So normally when I do an envelope with the envelope punch board, which I, I love, and I would have to say it is the punch board I use the most often. I love it, I use it for a lot of things. I use it for when I send out my hostess code gifts to my customers. So there are um, lots of designer papers that I have left over, and then I will use it for that. And normally what I would do is fold these two sides in, fold in this one, and then I would have it open this way. But for this envelope, to do it a little bit different, this is gonna be my top, and I'm not gonna put any adhesive on there. And I'm gonna fold it over and fold it over, and then this is my top piece right here. So that will be left open. I'm gonna use some um, tear and tape. This is a really sticky adhesive and it's so easy to use because you can just decide how much you want, tear it off, and then you remove the covering and you expose the sticky part. Put that down. And now I'm going to put the tape on this edge. You don't want to make sure, you want to make sure that you do not um, seal your envelope. 
by pour, putting, meaning what I mean by that is don't put any adhesive back here because if you do, then you will seal your envelope and you won't be able to get your little card in there. Okay, oops, sometimes these, there we go, I'll get it on this end here. No, I won't. Okay, so then once you've removed that top, rub that down and there is the base for your envelope. It's that easy with the envelope punch board. It makes it so nice and easy. So now I've got my next step and let's do some decorating. From the Dashing Along paper and from those coffee dies, I'm using this die to um, cut out my cup that is done from the designer paper. You really only need a two and a half by three and a half inch piece for that, but um, I wanted my star to fit or to fall in a certain place into my die, so I just took a whole piece like this and left it like that. With my magnetic platform, I'm gonna set down one acrylic plate, put down my paper, and I have it set so that I have that star where I want it, put an additional acrylic plate, pull in my big shot, and I run this through. From after this point, I will be using the Big Shot several times, but I'm not going to pull it in every time. You can do die cutting with it. You can do um, embossing. There's several things. So I'm just going to actually use my uh, Big Shot off to the side and cut that out just so that it, it you don't have to watch me do that. There is that part. So now we're going to do some stamping. And this is a photopolymer stamp set. So I am putting a stamp and pierce pad underneath. This just gives a little cushion because those photopolymer stamps do not have any cushion between them. And that will help out with that part of it. Bring in my pieces here. So I have, let's see, a few things to cut and to stamp. We'll do the coffee beans on here. We're gonna do the coffee cup cover. I have the straw and the whipped cream and a cup. And then this is for my inside. So let's start out with the smoky slate. Okay. So there is my whipped cream and that is the only one that I need smoky slate for. So I can tuck that to the side. I will need the coffee beans on this one from Cherry Cobbler. And the coffee beans are really subtle. Okay, I am stamping the lid in Garden Green ink onto Garden Green cardstock. So it has a darker look on there, but I don't have it the white border. And I wanted to do that that way. I need a Garden Green coffee cup. I try to run as many items through at one time as I can. Be, that just gives me fewer runs through the big shot. So I'm going to line up all of these items that I have stamped through the big shot. Uh, one thing you'll notice too is that the magnetic platform has little circular dies that have spaces in between them. And sometimes if it's a smaller die and you get those spaces between or your die sits down between, it pulls. The metal pulls to the nearest magnet. So if you have a smaller die, you may want to tape it down to make sure that it doesn't move on you as you're going through the big shot. And I usually use washi tape to tape that down. It's, it's not as sticky and it will hold that die in place. If it's a bigger die, these are a lot of small dies, so I'm going to probably end up taping most of them down. If it's a larger die, you don't really have that pull quite so much and there's nothing like stamping it, running it through the big shot and it comes out and it slipped as it was going through and then you have to do it again. Now I know that's not the end of the world, I get that, it's not the end of the world, but I do like to not have to do things over if I don't have to. Okay, so those are all the pieces I'm going to run through on this pass and then I'll be back. Okay, so I also need a coffee cup warmer, so I'm gonna cut that out of Cherry Cobbler. From those layered ovals, I need my largest die, my largest oval die that I'm using as kind of a base to hold my entire piece on. So I'm going to run these two pieces through the Big Shot. And now I have the corrugated embossing folder, and this is one of those dynamic embossing folders, meaning it's really thick and it 
um, gives a nice deep impression. In fact, it's such a deep impression that sometimes with the corrugated folder, you can actually cut your paper in half. So there's a couple of things that I've learned. One is it helps to spritz it with a little bit of water that will loosen up those fibers. And that's what I'm doing with my cardstock here. I did this with a Stampin' Spritzer. I did it off the screen just so I didn't get water everywhere. I want my corrugation to go this vertical this way. And the other one, believe it or not, that makes a big difference is running it through the Big Shot with this folded end into the into the Big Shot first. So you wanna make sure that you have this fold. If you put it on the edges, you could rip it up and then you would end up with two pieces and only one acrylic plate. Let's bring in that Big Shot and run that through. Okay. And it won't take long for that that these pieces to dry. And then you have your corrugated paper. Now, sometimes this is a very deep corrugation, so it will um, really shrink up your paper. And if it shrinks it up a little bit more than I want, I just kind of press it back down to kind of make it a little bit back to the original width or length. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to check to see that's pretty good. I'm going to just stretch it back out, gently out. There we go. But for some reason, I don't know why, but if you run it through with the fold first, you have better luck without getting your cardstock into multiple pieces. And I noticed I wasn't really careful that my corrugation is a little bit off, but I'm just going to go with it. I don't think in the overall scheme of things, you're not going to notice it so much. Okay, I'm going to set these aside to dry. I also need to stamp that sentiment, which is from that punch board. And we're going in with Garden Green. So those are the colors I've used for this, is Garden Green, Cherry Cobbler, and Smoky Slate. And I'm going to punch that with the 1 and 3 eighths inch circle punch. I've had this punch for a long time, so mine is the old whale tail style. But if you um, purchase it now, it's the same punch, but it's just the newer style where you can um, close it. It's a sleeker style. It's the lock style. Okay, so we can get going on putting some of this stuff together. I'm going to remove that stamp and pierce pad. I personally, it's a personal thing is I do not like, I don't like when I get little pieces of paper around either. I don't like um, using that stamp and pierce pad underneath when I'm doing adhesive. I just feel like I get a better stick or adhesive for that. Okay, let's put that down. Let's put down our sentiment in the center here, sending Christmas wishes. And I don't have much to work on here, but I'll have a little more space to work on once I bring in that crumb cake background. So there's our main cup. Just wipe away any extra adhesive there. Here is our cup that has the paper, or the fancy paper on it. And I just put those beans in the center. And again, like last, like with the cup, there's not a lot of room until you put this down onto that background. I am going to take this and go over it with the clear Wink of Stella. It is more difficult on camera to see the Wink of Stella, but it has a lovely shimmer. I love shimmer. And it's, I'm just laying down shimmer. I mean, who doesn't like shimmery whipped cream? Okay, and that will dry very quickly too. So then I have my straw and I am going to just trim it up to match that there. And as soon as this dries, it won't take long, but it's, I used quite a bit. It's gonna take a moment to dry. Okay, I am going to let my, I'm going to let those parts dry for the front and I'm going to move to the inside of my card. So I'm going to be stamping, so I'm gonna pull this back in. And I want, I decided to add a coffee theme to this and I wanted this flat, so I did a little bit of masking so it has a little bit of a three-dimensional look. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the cherry cobbler and I'm going to stamp my coffee cup. You'll notice that my stamp pad or my, sorry, my photopolymer stamp is pretty stained. The better photopolymer 
stamps do stain like this one has and red seems to particularly stain it so especially if you have your reds it gets very stained so I'm just stamping this flat and I'm going to put that on there then the it, the stamp set includes this little wrap for the center and I'm just doing it tone on tone me or using monochromatic I guess I'm using the same color and then um, life happens coffee helps you know if you'd rather go with the Christmas theme through the inside rather than doing that you could I thought it was kind of fun just to make that play on the coffee so now I have this part all stamped what I've done is I've stamped the same images on a piece of post-it note and so it's got a little bit of stickiness to it put that down and I'm covering up my top image and that will keep this one without anything stamped over it and so it's going to keep it looking like it's in the um, foreground so I'm stamping this and you'll notice I'm stamping off at the bottom down here and I'm just stamping off to the side so that we have some areas that are overhanging and we're gonna stamp the lid and leave that mask there. We're not done with that mask yet. This is going to help keep that front one from getting inked up. Then I took a sponge dauber with a little bit of the cherry cobbler and I wanted, I didn't le like leaving them quite so white and stark. So I just took this and I added a little bit of sponging. I'm leaving that mask in place so I don't go over the front one. And I'm adding just a little bit of color here. And this way I had a little more um, separation between the front and the back. And then when you remove that mask, you have your coffee cup that's sticking out in the front. Now here comes that snowflake piece. I'm going to use that and I'm using the garden green. I tried it with the smoky slate snowflakes. I just didn't like it. So I went back to the garden green. So we're stamping it off because I don't want this to overpower my coffee cups. I just want it more subtle in the background. So I've stamped off my snowflakes just to have that in the background. And that's going to kind of get covered by the gift card, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, that makes it a little bit softer. So with my gift card, I'm going to just put a little adhesive on the back there, easy to remove. But there it is, and that's ready to go into my envelope, the gift card envelope. So now we've got to finish decorating up this front. So now to assemble this, I did use a um, heat tool to dry to speed up the drying time of my corrugated piece because I got it wet to run it through the Big Shot. So if you would rather use rubbing alcohol rather than water, it's going to dry a little more quickly but then you gotta deal with the smell. So depending on how much I'm in a hurry or not, I will use water or rubbing alcohol. Both would work. Okay, so let's line this up. And I'm using some of the tear and tape because it's got that corrugation in there and I want it to stick really well. Okay, so with this, I can put down my, Let's see, I'm gonna make sure I put all the tape on this part because I don't want it to stick to where I don't want it. Does that make sense? I don't want it to stick to the envelope. Okay, so let's put that there. And I'm gonna use a little more. I've got the corrugation going on here and I also have the um, where you're gonna be kind of handling this quite a bit. So I decided to use the tear and tape just to kind of hold that down and keep it in there a little bit stronger than I feel like I would get with um, using regular adhesive. I'm gonna use a mini glue dot to put down this straw. And we're just gonna tuck that right onto the front here. There we go, oops. If I need a little more adhesive I can tuck. I think I'm gonna put an additional mini glue dot underneath here. Looks like I missed that spot a little bit. There we go. That should hold that better. Now we need to place this down on the front. And again, you don't want to get 
your adhesive underneath where it's going to stick it closed. So I am using some more of that tear and tape and I'm just putting that down, nice, good, strong adhesive. And if I feel like I need a little bit more after I've stuck it down, I can take some mini glue dots and kind of slip it in between where I need a little more adhesive. I would really, really recommend the tear and tape with this. And so let's push that down. Take a mini glue dot and let's just make it a little bit smaller so it's not sticking out. Let's put that underneath. There we go. So now you don't want any tape anywhere here exposed that's going to stick your envelope closed. Okay, we're almost done here. So now I have a length of the metallic ribbon and this is actually a shaded spruce, but I thought, oh, it will go pretty well with this whole color. It's a little bit darker, but it, it does look nice with it. And it has a little shimmer, so that's kind of fun too. And this comes in a duo pack, and I can't remember right now the other color, but all of my supplies are below in the description and on the blog post. And if you click right on the ribbon, it'll take you to my online store and tell you what exactly I have used. And there is your gorgeous envelope for your gift card. So all you have to do, then this just tucks underneath the ribbon to hold it in place, and you can adjust where that ribbon goes, depending on where that falls. Open it up. Slip your little paper inside and then close it up and it's ready to give or to send. If you have any questions at all of how I've done this little envelope, be sure to contact me, Chris, at mystamplady.com. You can find all the supplies on my in my online store at shopwithmystamplady.com. And I have them all listed on my blog or down below in the description. I hope you enjoy making this fun Christmas gift. Thanks for watching.